What's up guys, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting and today I'm gonna to discuss with you guys how I use Onyx to do my pre-scouting in the winter. So what I'm gonna do is put together a couple videos for you guys that explains exactly what I do uh, to get prepared for deer season. The first video is gonna discuss how I do my pre-scouting at home using Onyx maps. Uh, props to Aaron from Hunting Public. I uh, spent a lot of time this winter watching YouTube and reading articles. And again, thank you to those guys at Hunting Public. You guys are a riot to watch. And Aaron, you convinced me to get Onyx and it's been well worth the money and the time that I've put into it so far. The second video is actually gonna take you and I out into the woods. We're gonna put some boots on the ground and we're gonna use Onyx in the field and I'm gonna show you how I use different colors and different waypoints to make it easier for me to interpret uh, what I learned in the field. And the third video is actually gonna be me back at home taking the data I collected in the field and making it into a form that's easily understandable so there's not too many waypoints on your map so that you can sit down and find definite deer trails, possible stands, stands that are definites, and any other information that you think is gonna be important when you actually go out into the field to hunt that day. One of the first things I wanna show you guys on Onyx is that you can choose several states. Uh, playing around, I just chose a couple, Illinois and Indiana and Kentucky. Uh, Missouri, but for the most part for me this year, I'm gonna focus on upstate New York. I'm gonna do some hunting in Pennsylvania and uh, hope to do a trip to Ohio next fall. So I'm gonna click on New York and it's gonna bring up the New York layers for me. And one of the first things that I wanna show you, which is a great feature, is the New York State private lands. And you'll see that it is shown in red. I have kind of zoomed in a little bit here to show some privacy. And uh, I've shown you the outline of the red shown individuals' properties. The nice thing is it also gives the names of the individuals in these properties. So I'm gonna click off that private land feature. And what I'm gonna focus on for you guys really right now is this public land feature. So as I zoom out a little bit, you guys can see that I'm showing you upstate New York. And if I eliminate the public land feature, you'll see that it simply gives us this satellite imagery that's present right here, which you see just the same as you would with Google Maps. But if I click this back on again, you'll see how easy it is to locate public land in New York State. So my big thing is trying to find public land close to my house that's not too far away. Under an hour, closer to 30 minutes possibly if I can. You'll see this purple line that I put around here and that was just a reminder for me uh, to come back and take a look at this area. I had just hit area shape. Uh, now that I know I'm gonna work on this area, I'm gonna take that area shape and I'm gonna delete that area shape right there because now I know I'm gonna focus on this area of public land. So I'm gonna come in and take a look at this public land and a couple of features I wanna show you as well. Uh, first of all, we have a satellite image that's present here. We have a hybrid image which shows you both the satellite and it all shows, also shows you the contour lines and contour lines, if you don't know, are just points of equal elevation. And the other feature for me that I find very effective is just simply the topo map itself. Uh, you look at this one and you can see that here's this steeper slope on this east side of this hill or ridge. And you can see that here's two hilltops with a saddle in between. And you can see that there's some more gradual land right here where it's not as steep coming out of this creek valley. You'll also see that when you look at contour lines, they always make V's and they point upstream. So that automatically gives you an idea of the direction of the stream is flowing. With these contour lines, 
pointing up to the north, you know that this creek is flowing in a southerly direction right here. For me, for the most part, I move back and forth between topo and hybrid, and I really try to use both of them together to find these areas of land that I think um, are going to be good places to go scout. So I'm going to start in this public land by taking a look at the topography and I'm gonna try and plot some waypoints to give me an idea of some places that I wanna take a look at uh, when I get out in the field. So it's real easy. Uh, if you click on add waypoint, it gives you this exhaustive list of different types of waypoints you can use. It also gives you the ones that are recently used. You'll see here on the desktop version that it gives you eight or nine different recently used functions. But when you're out in the field on your phone, you're going to find that it only gives you three. Um, sometimes a little bit of a pain in the butt. It would be nice to have this full feature out in the field on your phone as well. So I'm going to click more. And I'm going to scroll down and you'll see that there's all different types of waypoints that you can use uh, that are effective to mark different places on the map. And I'll get more into how I use these a little bit later. After scrolling around this map for a little while, I found an area that's kind of intriguing to me. For the most part, I've been using the topographic map feature, but I can also click back and forth to the hybrid feature and show some farmlands uh, on both sides of this forested area right here. And the other thing that I see is that it is an area that doesn't look like it has a lot of roads leading to it. I like personally to be able to get at least a half mile uh, back away from roads to try and get myself away from hunters. Um, there are frustrating times hunting public land. You're gonna run into other hunters, and for the most part, you and those other hunters, you communicate, you talk, you're all out there to enjoy the same thing, so hopefully you guys are able to communicate on the way out into the field so that everybody gets to enjoy the experience together. But for me, the further that I can get away from roads, uh, the less pressure that you're gonna have of other hunters, and probably the less spooked deer are gonna be. Uh, hopefully getting into some of those bigger, more mature deer that aren't used to seeing as many hunters that they may see closer to roads. I'm gonna zoom in this area that I found right here, and I'm gonna go back to the topo map, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what looks like a real promising area to me is these two hilltops and there's a saddle that's connecting them. You take a look, here is an east facing slope where any west wind, the deer may be over on this east edge to get out of the wind. Uh, it looks as though, you know, there's a creek bottom here and right here, this is also a east facing slope that you see on this area. So from this hilltop, we drop down into this valley of the creek and back up the other side. This, this large bench that's present right here. And over here, you see that there's two more hilltops and another saddle. This short clip shows you guys exactly what this area between the two ridges actually looks like out in the field. Uh, it shows you to the right at the beginning of the video, one ridge, and as I pan, you see the saddle and then on the left you will see the other ridge and as I come back behind you will see that there is one draw going down over the ridge to the east and as I come back there's one draw going down over to the west. What's happening folks? Here we are in the second part of this first video in this series talking about how I do my pre-scouting using Onyx in the winter time. Uh, for me, it's a totally different day. For you guys, it's just the second half of the video. Um, but I wanted to stop for a second and uh, say uh, thank you to Jason Hazlitt at Hector Wine Company. He got me these uh, great glasses for Christmas. Gentlemen, cheers to Jason at Hector Wine Company. Cheers to Van Halen. On to the second half of the video. The first thing that I do to help me out is I plot roads that surround the property. And it gives me an idea of access points for hunters and allows me to really take a look at the property a little bit in more detail and figure out some places that I want to go and check out that may be a little bit further away from where most of the hunters are in the woods hunting. So if you take a look at it, you'll see that these solid red lines for me represent the public roads surrounding the property. And the one that I really wanna look at is this one right here. And 
This road, I believe, stops by looking at the solid lines on the map and then looking at the dashed lines on the map to represent for me what would probably be either logging roads or possibly seasonal use roads. So to add a waypoint, first thing you do is go up here to add waypoint. Uh, I'm gonna hit more. And what I wanna find is the one that's already here. It's a uh, gate. And for me, I use gate in red and I'm gonna plop that gate right there and hit save. One of the first things I wanna do now going in there is I wanna find out whether or not that's a gate, meaning that's as far as hunters can drive to. Uh, I use a lot of mountain bike too, and I've got a cargo trailer I pull behind my mountain bike so I can get out quarter mile, half mile, mile, mile and a half away from people on my bike. We're not using a lot of energy and then it's only maybe a half mile or a quarter mile to hike into a stand. And to me, with old man knees and arthritis, it makes it a lot easier to be able to use that bike to get into some places. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I go see this property is I'm gonna find out where the gate is. If that's actually a place where the gate is, I'm gonna to go to a second waypoint and I hit more and I'm gonna slide down to the truck symbol. And for me, Anything that is human, that is me, I color black, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plot this truck symbol right by where that gate is to give me an idea that this is where I'm gonna be parking. Now, when I get out in the field, I may find that this is totally different. I may find that the gate is way back here or that there's no gate, there's just a berm and four wheelers can go up and around it. But for right now, I've got that gate there and if I have to move it in the field, it's already there and all I have to do is go back to it, click on it, hit edit, and then I can take that and I can move it around wherever I want it. But right now, for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna keep it right here. What I'm gonna do now is to save some time is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna plot uh, some different points on this map, and then I'm gonna come back uh, after I get done, turn the camera back on, and I'm gonna go through these with you guys. I've gone ahead and taken a little bit more in-depth look at the property now uh, by zooming in and out just using the plus and minus symbols that you see right here and also using those plus and minus symbols uh, dropping into the hybrid mode so that I can see the contour and see whether it's forest, whether it's fields. Um, sometimes you can tell the difference between hardwoods and pines. And uh, I've plotted some waypoints that I want to talk to you guys about. I showed you a little bit earlier how to plot those waypoints. Uh, one of the things I did not show you yet was how to plot a line. I actually was looking at this map and realized that there was a couple roads, this road right here and this road right here that I had missed. So I went back and plotted those by simply taking the line distance right here and picking what color I want. For example, I've got red right here and I pick my weight and I want my weight to be a solid line, just medium width. And then very simply, you go ahead and begin to click along this road, trying to follow along the best I can for the shape of the turns. Double click to hit stop, hit save. And now I have just created this new road that we see right here. So I've plotted some points and I want to go through those points with you guys to give you an idea of what plots I'm using and the colors that I'm using. Uh, the yellow that you see right here are pinch points and for me, I use pinch points for a couple reasons. I use them when I have some saddles shown here and here. So here's a ridge, here's a ridge, there's a lower elevation of this saddle present right here. I also use some of these pinch points where I might have an area where you have some contour lines that suddenly get much closer together and the land is steeper. Where you hear, here you see the contour lines are further apart, meaning the land isn't as steep. And the same here. And hopefully I may find a trail or a bench right here that may funnel these deer into one or two trails in which I can put a tree uh, in the morning just above the trail with thermals, or I can put a tree stand uh, in the evening just below this trail with thermals coming down. So I use those pinch points for a couple of different reasons. I found one other pinch point here that I think is also interesting and I wanted to give you guys an idea of why I don't think it's probably gonna work. Here's this area where there's a draw coming up 
here's a saddle present right here. Here's also a ridge and a ridge and a saddle present right here. And here's a draw coming up here and a draw coming up here. So if you take a look at it, draw one, draw two, draw three. You got a saddle here, a saddle here. I think a good place that you may find some deer moving, but this worries me. What does this parking mean? Does this parking mean that vehicles can get in from above on this public road or is there a gate right here or possibly is this gate open during hunting season so that hunters can get in there or is it possibly a handicapped hunter access until you get there you don't know so i still put this pinch point here as a point of interest but until i get there and get boots on the ground i really know what this parking area is all about i'm really not sure whether or not that's going to be an area that i can jump on and go really spend a bunch of time trying to find a place to put a tree stand one of the other things you see is I have these points of interest and this point of interest right here is on this area where there's this little flat bench that's pretty much at the bottom of this slope right here, but it's also just above the creek. You may get some deer that are moving across here and there may be some oaks present on this area. It may be an area that's a bedding area for buck. I don't know. I put it as a point of interest so that I can take a look at it when I get in there and see whether or not it's something that's worth investigating further or not. Another point of interest I have right here is this point that's coming down right here. And if you take a look, here is this ridge. And this point kind of makes a turn from going southward to going southeast, now to going east to now moving in almost a northeast direction. So it may be a travel corridor right there coming down off the slope down into this valley. So again, I put a point of interest there to come back and take a look at. A couple other things right here. This blue represents water for me, and this is a water crossing symbol. So it really doesn't matter where I end up along this creek, but I will move up along this creek at some point and try to find some places where there's distinct trails, worn down paths coming down from one slope, coming across the creek and moving up to the other slope. And I'll put this crossing there. And when I get out in the field, I can just simply grab this crossing, click on it, hit at it, and I can move it to wherever the crossing is. One other thing that's really important here is these buck symbols. And for me, I make it brown for a buck. And what I'm trying to look at is some possible buck bedding areas. And if I take a look at this right here, I have set this one on an east facing slope, this one on an east facing slope to be looking at predominant winds that are moving west to east or slightly southwest to northeast. Uh, predominantly, that's the winds we have in the U.S. and the Northeast. So I'm looking at those areas to be places where you may find buck bedding and some predominant west winds. And I also have one over here that you see as well. Here it is, this creek valley. As you're moving east, you're going up, up, up in elevation to the top of this ridge. And then over this ridge top, it starts to drop back down again. And here is a place where if you have some west winds, you may find a buck bedded over on this slope right here. I just came down about 50 yards over the top of the ridge and eastward facing slope and there's this little bench. There's this buck bedding area right here where you can smell anything coming from the west down over the ridge toward him. And he's got this great view looking down into the thick stuff in the creek bottom and then a trail and a bench that continues across this ridge right here. So this gives you guys an idea of some of the waypoints that I'm going to drop onto the map when I'm at home, not knowing exactly what the property looks like until I get out there, but giving me an estimate of some places that I possibly want to go and take a look at. The next thing I do after I get the waypoint set is I use the line distance waypoint and I try to draw out a possible path of where I want to hike. Obviously that could change when I get out in the field, but at least by doing it now, it gives me an idea of the direction that I want to move on this property. And it also gives me an idea of distance. Uh, for the most part, when I'm out doing these hikes close to home in New York, three, four or five miles is about as much as I want to do during a day. 
gives me about three, three and a half hours out in the field. I can take my time to really look at the woods, to, to uh, drop waypoints that I want while I'm in the field and uh, not be in too much of a rush so the pup and I can be out there and enjoy not only setting up some waypoints, but just being out in nature and enjoy the hike itself. So what I'm gonna do right here is I am going to start by zooming in a little bit at the place where I think I'm gonna park and I'm gonna hit the line distance. And for me, for line distance, for me hiking, I use the white and I drop down to the dots and the dots for me represent me walking on the ground. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna come up this little bit of this elevation and I'm gonna follow along on this east side of this ridge. I've got this saddle right here that I dropped as a point of interest. I'm gonna continue dropping this line southward along this east side of this ridge where I think I may have some bucks bedded. Estimate some of what I think these bucks may do along this area. See if I can find some trails along this east facing slope and also see if I can find some areas where I find either some bedding areas where I find some rubs. A couple times in New York State already I've been out where you know between a half and two thirds the way up a slope I find this real distinct trail and you can see it it's beaten right down in the side of the hill like you've taken a bulldozer and made a flat road for a logging road and along that every once in a while you get fortunate and you find six or eight or ten rubs all within like a 40 or 50 uh, yard area and those are areas that I definitely want to try and find in Keon. I then I'm gonna drop down in and I see that there's a road here too. So I'm gonna kind of scoot along this road and I'm gonna zoom down along the edge of this creek and I'm gonna see if I find any water crossings uh, that might be of interest to me right here. If I do find a water crossing, I'll take this point, I'll edit it and I'll move it up and down. And then I'm gonna finish up by coming back to this area that I said was a point of interest, but I was a little concerned because here's this parking area symbol here and I really don't know what it means. And I'm just kinda gonna check out this area of land up to this saddle. And then I'm gonna drop down this little point here again across this saddle and this logging road back to where I started again. So I hit safe and if you take a look, this gives you an idea in white dots of the general plan of where I want to hike. When you look at this now in the hybrid function, you can see it's really easy to see these white dots where I estimated my possible hike when I get out in the field. The other thing that's really nice is Onyx gives you a function called a tracking function in which when you leave the vehicle, you hit the start button for the track and it actually follows your steps and your path of your entire hike. Now, it may not be exactly on these white dots because you may find some other areas of interest, but when you get back to the house, you're going to find that you have your original idea of the white dots where you wanted to hike and then you have the blue dash track of where you actually hiked and that may help you remember exactly where you are with some of those points when you begin to interpret this stuff when you get back to the house. So I click back on this trail that I did right here and this gives me an idea of my hike 8.1 miles. Oof, that's, that's big. 8.1 miles for me in New York State on one hike is just a bit much. So if you take a look at this I can turn this into two hikes. One hike from the vehicle here past this buck symbol down to this Potter Hill, back up and around, and then I can get into this creek valley right here and come back in and stop. And then what I'll do is when I come back out here a second time, is I'll start at this truck symbol again, I'll come back down this creek, and I'll work this other loop that you have right here. So it'll probably give me like a three and a half mile hike one day, and like a four and a half mile hike the other day. 
this is going to wrap up this first video in this uh, three video series on how I use Onyx to scout. Again, this first video was about how I do my pre-scouting in the winter time. Uh, trying to give you guys an idea of summary. First of all, where's the public land within 30 to 45 minutes of my house? Uh, you take a look at that public land because you can use the map layer function to make it green so it's easy to see. I find a couple areas I think that are interesting to me. I look at the topography, if there's farm fields around there, water areas, uh, edge between pines and hardwoods, um, some ridges, some valleys, some benches. And I find one or two of these areas that I think look pretty interesting. And then I zoom into this area. I try to find where the public roads are around the area to see if it's an area that I can get a little bit further away from people. I zoom into the map, I plot some waypoints to give me a general idea of some interesting things, and then I lay out a possible hike. So far, I have probably put 40 miles on hiking uh, between end of March, April, May, and now the beginning of June. And probably before we get to August and I stop my scouting hikes, I'll probably put another 30, 35 miles uh, on the boots in New York State gives me an idea of some real solid places I can hunt in the fall, especially because when you get there in the fall, you don't know whether you're gonna have this killer place and walk in and there's four guys in tree stands and there's seven vehicles up on the top of the road. So you need to have some options, especially in every piece of property that I'm looking at right now. I have at least two or three definite stands and then two or three alternate stands so that if I get in there and there's people in an area that I'm at, I can jet off in a different direction and sit there and then maybe as I get ready to leave that day, uh, I can walk out and kind of take a look to see where there's other, some other hunters, uh, where there's some more vehicles parked and decide whether or not that's an area I really want to come back to or maybe it's an area that's got too much hunting pressure and I just don't even want to go back there again. Okay guys, we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I've given you some information that's going to help you out. If it has helped you out, hit the like button or subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next video everybody.